everyone. Now we shall start the chapter Deformation of Solids. Okay? I uh, want to summarize this chapter. So in this chapter, you will learn about stress. Okay? Stress is um, when like a wire or a steel rod is being pulled by a certain force. So the wire will experience a stress. Stress is force over cross-sectional area. Force is Newton. Area is meter square. So force over area is Newton per meter square. Okay, or Pascal. So stress, uh, the symbol with sigma, it has the unit Newton per meter square or Pascal. Okay, so if you look at this formula, force over area, it's the same formula as pressure. Uh, pressure. That's why uh, pressure, the unit also Pascal. Okay, you still remember the Pascal principle about the pressure? Uh, so stress is like pressure experienced by the steel wire under under a force for extension. Okay, so uh, it's it's same same like pressure. Okay, so it has the same unit as Pascal. Now, when the wire is being pulled by a force, of course, it will experience a, uh, elongation. Okay, elongation because of Hooke's law. Okay, uh, the Hooke's law is uh, this one. Um, yeah, Hooke's law is F equal to K. Last time we used Kx. Uh, now we use F equal to K E. Actually, these two is the same. Okay, uh, this is what we call Hooke's law. Uh, so when the wire is being pulled by a certain force, it will the wire will elongate. It will have elongation, uh, because of Hooke's law. Uh, so when the wire elongate, it will have strain. Strain. Uh, the symbol is uh, epsilon. Okay. Uh, it is the ratio between elongation over original length. Elongation is meter. Uh, length original length also meter. So when meter divided by meter become no unit. So strain is which is a ratio. Ratio always don't have any unit. Uh, okay. So that's why strain also no unit. Yeah, because it's a ratio. Meter divided by meter. Uh, so there's no unit for strain. How to get elongation? Elongation is the final length minus the initial length. Okay. Uh, so if you want to get the final length, you you use the original length plus elongation. Okay. Uh, then we will learn something about uh, Young modulus. Okay, Young modulus and also force constant. Young modulus and force constant they are almost similar. Huh? Almost similar. First we look at uh, the Young modulus. Young modulus is stress over strain. Uh, last, just now we learned about stress, sigma, stress, uh, divide by strain, epsilon. Uh, so stress divided by strain. So when we substitute the formula for stress, F over A, we substitute the formula for strain, E over L0, then we will finally get FL over AE for Young modulus. Uh, yeah, you just rearrange the formula. You substitute the formula F over A into sigma. You substitute E over L into epsilon. Uh, you rearrange, you will get this. FL over AE for Young modulus. The Young modulus formula is stress over strain or FL over AE. Okay, about the unit. Young modulus is stress over strain. Stress is Pascal. Strain is no unit. So Pascal divided by no unit you get Pascal. Uh, or Pascal also Newton per meter square. So Young modulus unit is the same as stress. Newton per meter square or Pascal. Uh, why same unit? Why Young modulus has same unit as uh, stress? Because strain has no unit. Uh, it divide by something with no unit. Understand? Uh, and force constant. Force constant K is force over elongation. Uh, this formula comes from the Hooke's law. Yeah? When the elongation go below force, uh, so the force constant is force over elongation. 
So Newton divided by meter. So Newton per meter. That's the unit for force constant. Okay, about these two, Young modulus and force constant, they differ by their value, their value differ by material. Different material, different Young modulus, and also different force constant. Basically, uh, they shows the rigidity of the material, or stiffness of the material, or toughness of the material, or hardness of the material. Understand? Uh, so, the higher the rigidity, the higher the stiffness, or the higher the hardness of the material, or the higher the toughness of the material, the higher the force constant, the higher the Young modulus. So, different material, different force constant and Young modulus. For example, like the steel and copper. So, these two material has different Young modulus and also different force constant. Uh, their value Y and value K different because they have different material. Which one has higher Young modulus and force constant? Of course, the tougher one. Uh, so, steel is more stiff. More rigid. Sorry. Um, steel is more rigid, more tough, more stiff. Uh, so it has higher Young modulus and higher force constant. Uh, copper has lower Young modulus and lower force constant because they are soft metal, soft, softer than the steel. Uh, so the Y and K lower value. Uh, understand? Very easy. So they different different by uh, material. So uh, the rigidity, the rigidity, uh, we can say, uh, for example, um, can we say that the higher the elongation, the lower the Young modulus? Can we say like that? The higher the elongation of the material? The lower the Young modulus? No. Huh? Can we say that? Oh, the, the lower, the, the smaller the original length, the lower the Young modulus? No. It does not depend on this dimension. Okay? It does not depend on dimension. Uh, we, it's wrong. It just de depends on the material. Okay? So this one, the rigidity is independent independent of dimension of the object or the wire uh, can we say uh, something like for example um uh, i show an example uh, i show an example for, exa for example i have a short sorry for example if i have a short and long wire uh, this one is L1, this one is L2, uh, both made of steel. Okay, so what's the formula for Young modulus? Formula for Young modulus is FL over AE. Isn't it? Uh, oh, can we say that um, the rod number, number uh, the rod number 2, the rod number two, the length is bigger, longer than rod number one. Uh, so can we say that, oh, the, the longer the length, the higher the Young modulus? Oh, so that means uh, the Y2 must be bigger than Y1. Because you just look at the dimension. The longer the wire, the higher the Young modulus? That means the second rod, has higher Young modulus than the first rod? Is it true? Wrong. Wrong answer. They both made of same material. Ah, they both made of same material. So the Young modulus for number two is the same as Young modulus for number one. As long as they have same material, they have same Young modulus. So you cannot just plainly look at the formula uh, to to find uh, to determine what happened. Cannot. You don't understand. 
the higher the the higher the length, the Young modulus still constant. Uh, because why? Because they are made of same material. The Young modulus was still. Uh, but we can say that the the longer the length, maybe the 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 longer the elongation. Ah, uh, the longer the length, the longer the elongation. So the y is always still constant. Remember, same material, same Young modulus, ah, uh, or also same force constant. So this independent of dimension, ah, uh, independent of dimension. And this is very important. Independent of dimension. Uh, the dimension, what I mean is the, the length. The length or maybe the cross-sectional area. Okay. Also independent of cross-sectional area. Uh, okay. Uh, so like the, the length. Yeah. It's independent of the length and also independent of the cross-sectional area. Okay. So independent of the dimension of the object. So it just differ by material. Okay, remember ah. Uh? Now, strain energy. Next is about strain energy. Strain energy is uh, actually we can say these things is like um, elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy. Uh, elastic potential energy is like energy stored in the spring. You know, because uh, even the steel or any uh, metal actually they have they shows elastic deformation. Elastic is something the the properties for spring, isn't it? Elastic. Uh, when something is elastic, they store elastic potential energy. Uh, once you uh, pull pull the elastic material, pull pull the elastic material or compress the elastic material. It will store elastic potential energy. So same goes to elastic material like steel and copper. Yeah, even the metal itself also shows the elastic deformation. We say yeah? elastic deformation. So they store they store certain amount of elastic potential energy when they are pulled or compressed. Okay, uh, but we have a special name for the elastic potential energy stored in the Store in the steel or copper or metal. Okay, the 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 special name we call uh for the elastic potential energy stored in the metal is the strain energy. Uh, strain energy. So it comes by symbol U, uh, capital U. Uh, the formula is the same as elastic potential energy. Okay, half F E. Uh, last time we elastic potential energy we use what we use half fx uh, or half kx square isn't it uh, half kx square or half fx so uh, but this time we use a symbol elongation e instead of x uh, we use e so the symbol the formula is the same the strain energy is half fe or uh, half ke square uh, k is actually the force constant eh? or we can say uh, uh, the gradient of the Fe graph. Yeah, later you will see. Uh, okay, half, uh, strain energy is half Fe or half Ke square. The unit for strain energy is joule because it's a type of energy. Strain energy per unit volume is the this strain energy divided by the volume is half stress strain. Uh, half stress strain. Uh, the, uh, if you use straight stress and strain, uh, strain, we get strain energy per unit volume, uh, half stress strain. So, um, the unit for strain energy is joule, volume is meter square. So, strain energy per volume is joule per meter square. Uh, volume is uh, area times length. Yeah, because uh, it's actually like a wire, you know, a wire. Yeah, I'll just show you a wire. A wire uh, like that. Uh, this is the, the cross-sectional area. 
cross sectional area and this is the length uh, so area times length you get the volume of the rod it's like a cylinder isn't it uh, the area can be sometimes the area can be uh, like metal bar like metal bar the sometimes the area can be a, a square or rectangle it can be any shape you know? okay it can be uh, any shapes like a rectangle like that a uh, uh, steel bar the formula is steel area times length uh, area times length you get volume so uh, if area like if area like uh, this one um, you know a uh, a circle if the area is a circle to find the area we use pi r square or pi diameter square over 4 uh, how to get pi diameter square over 4 uh, you know uh, the radius is diameter divided by 2 so you substitute you get diameter square over 4 uh, if you, the area is uh, a square uh, then it is equal to uh, you know the you know the 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 width with the length with length so it becomes L square, isn't it? L times L, you get L square. Uh, okay, and this is the width. Huh? So uh, depend on the shape. Huh? The area depends on the shape. Okay, so that that's it. The formula for chapter for this chapter, deformation of solids. Okay, these are those. These are the important ones. And then you have two graphs. You need to remember. First one is the force elongation graph. Force is Newton, elongation is meter. Uh, actually, this is a, a force proportional to elongation. Actually, this is a Hooke's law. Hooke's law because force is a, force is proportional to elongation. Force proportional to elongation. So the gradient of the graph, we learned before, the gradient of the graph is the force constant. Uh, force divided by elongation is the gradient of the force elongation graph. So the gradient of this graph is force constant. Now the area under force elongation graph is called the strain energy. Uh, it's that the elastic potential energy. Yeah, elastic potential energy. But the elastic potential energy for metal we have a special name we call strain energy. Uh, so strain energy is half Fe. Uh, half Fe. Yeah? It's like uh, you calculate the area of the triangle. Area of triangle, uh, half Fe. Yeah? The, the length and height. Yeah? The length and height, half. Okay? The area for triangle, half Fe. Uh, or equal to half Ke square. Uh, when we substitute. Um, the force we equal to, you know, when we substitute the this force, we substitute with Ke, and we substitute F equal to Ke. This is the Hooke's law. We substitute F equal to Ke. We get half Ke square. Uh, so half Ke square or half Fe is the strain energy, which is also the area under force elongation graph. Now. For the, uh, we have another graph called stress strain graph. Stress strain graph. Stress is Pascal, strain no unit. The gradient, the gradient for stress strain is called the Young modulus. Uh, Young modulus. Okay, gradient for uh, stress strain graph is Young modulus, stress over strain. Yes, remember this one? Stress over strain. Uh, so Young modulus is the gradient of stress strain graph. And the area under the stress strain graph is called the strain energy per unit volume. Uh, or half stress strain. Uh, just now for strain energy is if Fe, then you use half Fe. Uh, if stress strain, then half stress strain. Uh, so half stress strain, if you work out you get strain energy per unit volume. Yeah? If you use the formula for stress, F over A, 
strain E over L. Uh, let me never mind. Uh, let me show you. Stress over strain. Uh, let me show you. Uh, half stress strain. Uh, what is the formula for stress? Formula for stress is F over A, isn't it? Uh, for strain is E over L naught. Uh, so uh, when we sub when we substitute. Uh, half we go to the top, half F E, and below become become A over A and L, so A A L not. Uh, so what do you get? Half F E, half F E is strain energy. Uh, see you not know? strain energy. A times L is what? A times L. Uh, A times L is volume. Uh, A times L is volume so this is the half stress strain is strain energy per unit volume uh strain energy per unit volume half stress strain uh so the area under stress strain graph area under stress strain graph is strain energy per unit volume uh, that means um if strain energy strain energy is the total total energy stored by the steel wire when it is being pulled the whole the strain energy is the total energy stored in the whole wire the whole wire when it is being pulled uh, strain energy per unit volume is just the strain energy per unit volume of the of the whole matter it's not the it's just a, a unit volume of the uh, metal wire Stored, okay. Uh, strain energy stored in the uh, one unit volume of the whole matter. Uh, so we can say strain energy is the total energy. Uh, strain energy per unit volume is the strain energy stored in one unit volume of the whole matter. So is this this one is strain energy is the bigger value. Strain energy per unit volume is a smaller value. Okay. Uh, joule and joule per meter square uh, per meter cube. Sorry. Okay. So very simple. When you have a force elongation graph, force elongation graph, uh, the gradient, the gradient is a uh, force constant, F over E. The area under the force elongation graph is strain energy, uh, half stress strain, eh, no, half F E. When you have stress strain graph, the gradient, the gradient is Young modulus, stress over strain. And the area under area under stress strain is strain energy per unit volume. Uh, okay, so the gradient for Fe, the gradient the gradient for Fe is force constant. The gradient for stress strain is Young modulus. The area for force elongation is strain energy. The area for stress strain is strain energy per unit volume. Okay. So that's it for the first part of our summary. Okay, uh, hope you enjoy it. So now uh, stay tuned for the next part. Thank you.